From NBC News, this is Total Eclipse 2024. Live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, here's Lester Holt. Good day, everyone, from Indianapolis, and welcome to our special coverage of what experts say might be the most watched solar eclipse ever. Pretty profound statement. We're live at the home of the Indianapolis 500, and what NASA says is for today, the world's largest viewing site for the eclipse. We already got our first look at it in North America. A partial eclipse is visible in Mazatlan on Mexico's west coast. And as we come on the air, we just got our first look at the partial eclipse here in Indiana. We're minutes away from the total eclipse's arrival here in the U.S. It will be visible in some form across all 48 contiguous states. But for a key part of the country, the word of the day is totality. That's when the sun is completely obscured by the moon, plunging the earth below into darkness for several minutes. It's positively makes you giddy. 16 states will experience total uh, totality with the shadow of the moon carving this path, starting at the Texas border and gliding diagonally across the Midwest and Northeast until it exits off of Maine. But today is not just about what's happening up in the sky. It's also about this collective moment for all of us here on planet Earth, creating shared memories across generations during a phenomenon that won't be visible to most Americans for the next 20 years. Think about it. And where I am right now, 50,000 people gathered to witness this moment. Our NBC News reporters are fanned out across the path of the eclipse where millions of people are about to catch a glimpse of history. Right now, we want to turn it over to Al Roker, who is in Dallas, the largest city in the eclipse's path, and one of the first cities that is going to experience this event in the U.S. Al, you've got a pretty boisterous crowd there, a lot of excitement. Describe it for us. Yeah, we, absolutely, Lester. We are here at the uh, Perot Museum of, of Science, and we've got all these folks here, and we've also got some sun now peeking through, and we're starting to see the eclipse, it's about, okay, take a look at the eclipse cam right now. In fact, Mike, follow me over here. We've got a camera trained on this 12, this is a 1200 me meter, 1200 meter lens, Ray tells me, and that lens is shooting up to the safely. Ray is not looking at it directly. And we've got all these folks hanging around. The great thing about this is we had a, a dire forecast for the this area earlier, but things have gotten a little bit better. Let's look at the satellite imagery to give you a sense of what we are talking about. So right now, visible. this is a visible satellite, clouds breaking up in Dallas. Little Rock, that's another uh, totality. That's another state capital. In fact, Austin, Little Rock, Indianapolis, and also in uh, Montpelier, Vermont, four state capitals will see total will see totality. Cleveland, you're looking good. Watertown, Burlington, Holton, Maine, where Kate Snow is probably going to have the best view of anybody. And look at this global view of the planet right now. And you get oh, first, I'm going to show you the eclipse weather. Sunshine in Junction, Texas. Kerrville, cloudy to partly cloudy. Dallas, some clouds and sun. That's what we've got right now. Then we move a little further along the path of totality. You can see Bloomington, Indiana, going to be gorgeous. Where you, Lester, and Tom Costello are, beautiful, 306, mostly to partly sunny. Little Rock, partly sunny. Cleveland looking good where Jesse Kirsch and Chris Jansing are. Brockport, New York. Ryan Nobles, you've got some clouds, but hopefully those are going to break up. And as I said, Kate Snow, Holton, Maine, sunny skies, going to be gorgeous as it exits. And look at that. You can see that shadow right there, right across North America. There it is, the eclipse. Now, what are some of the effects of the eclipse, Lester? Well, when we see that eclipse finally take totality, we're talking about temperatures dropping anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees. We're talking about uh, things getting quiet. Uh, temperature drops. Dropping temperature will decrease cloud cover, so you'll get to see a little bit more. The relative humidity will increase, and the solar, the reduced solar radiation will cause those winds to calm down a little bit. Plus, it might get awfully quiet. Why? Because a lot of birds start to nest. They think it's nighttime. And look down at the ground. Your shadow starts to get much, much more in relief. It starts to almost become high definition. So there's a lot that's going to happen. I want to take another look up here, Lester. And my gosh, it is coming along. Wow, we got some clouds just moved in right in front of it. But it's uh, it's quite the it's quite the experience. And folks here are really thrilled to be part of this.
this. We've got 7,000 people here alone. It's, I got to tell you, Lester, this, the mood here is electric. Yeah, no, I, Al, you've covered these things before. You know the excitement. I've never covered one or witnessed one in person, but if, <laughs> I kind of want to be with your crowd there jumping up and down. It is a well, pretty exciting moment. Well, we should tell, yeah, go ahead. You know what? I was with uh, Tom Costello and I were together in 2017. We were in the deck of the USS Yorktown, and we had thunderstorms all around us, and all of a sudden a hole opened up, and we got to see it. It was the most amazing sight ever. Uh, and Tom will talk to you about it. We literally had the hairs on our arms raising. I, 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 Tom probably had the hair on his head raising. I'm, on the other hand, a little <laughs> deficient in that. So a different story. <laughs> I'm with you, pal. All right, we're going to talk to Tom in just a minute, but I want to say that once the eclipse moves through Texas, it'll then move until it reaches us here in the Midwest. Tom Costello is with me at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You, you both have described that moment in 2017. We should mention, compared to 2017, this is a lot more people will see this eclipse. A lot more people because the path is wider, of course, and the eclipse is lasting longer in certain areas. We're going to get, I think, about three minutes and 47 seconds here in Indianapolis. Some areas getting more than four minutes, uh, but you're right. And you got an awful lot of people in the heartland who are going to experience this. And what we're seeing here right now, people here in the background, there's a partnership between the Indy 500 folks and NASA, and they've been running education videos yeah. explaining a little bit about this. You have been looking into this. What is the scientific value? What is it we don't know in 2024 about the sun? It's kind of amazing that how much we don't know about the sun. And scientists want to take full advantage of the eclipse to study the corona. That's the sun's atmosphere. Normally, we can't see it because the sun is so bright. But when the moon blocks the sun, we can see the corona, the outer edges that are starting to bubble up, if you will. That's plasma. It's a magnetic field. And what happens is that the sun sends that magnetic field and these solar storms to Earth. That disrupts our power systems, our satellites, our communications. So NASA wants to better understand that so they can better predict when we might have a solar storm. So as a result, NASA is sending up uh, three rockets loaded down with experiments today coming up out of Virginia. They will be in the ionosphere, the upper atmosphere of Earth, tracking the impact on the ionosphere. And they're sending a plane to 50,000 feet up to do their own experience, experiments rather, on the ionosphere and trying to understand the corona. This is an amazing opportunity, and we won't get it again for 20 years. Let's show you. We're uh, heading into totality now. This, I believe, is coming in from Mazatlan, Mexico. Indeed, it is. This is the first spot in uh, North America now. Yeah, get it. You can just see that outer corona there, but that is totality in Mazatlan. We understand that people had gathered on beaches uh, in anticipation of this moment. There will be no sunbathing, at least for this moment. Uh, Al, I'm sure you never get tired of looking at these images. I, I tell you, and what we got to see while you, you were chatting with Tom, we saw the phenomenon they call Bailey's beads. It's just as the as the, the moon completely covers the sun, you actually start right between the, the crevices of the mountaintops and the ranges there, you get this, this, this dazzling effect. It's almost like a diamond ring. And they call that Bailey's beads. And it's literally just for a moment. We only saw it for about three or four seconds and then gone. And as people, uh, as this totality happens at different spots, people need to watch out for that because it's, it's very, very brief but it's worth it. It was gorgeous to see right here in Mazatlan. Yeah, now we haven't seen folks on the ground and, and what it looks like from the ground, but we can presume it's, it's nighttime for all intents and purposes during this period. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It gets it's it's like dusk almost to a certain point. Uh, and you, you like I said, and Tom has seen it there. There's the ground shot right now. I mean, that's like sunset. And, uh, uh, and Tom, remember, we were talking about how weird our shadows looked, remember? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, there are these phases of the eclipse that are important, right? We have the penumbria, the penumbra, rather, which is really we're seeing the white outline, the white shadow, if you will. But then the umbria is when the darker inner shadow takes over completely. And so there are these various stages that all the scientific community loves to geek out about. But look at that right there on the corona around the edges of the sun and this is just an incredible opportunity to see that close up on, on a uh, super close up lens mazatlan obviously a uh, a big tourist destination and more so 
as many of these uh, towns and cities along the path of this eclipse have become uh, many a uh, year or two years out selling out uh, accommodations and a lot of people finding it hard to get there and to be uh, to be witness to this. I was on a plane flying in from New York today and I could tell there were other uh, eclipse watchers on board with me. You could see their <laughs> their folders of information, their hats and sunscreen and all that. Uh, but this is something to witness. I can't believe we're going to be seeing the same thing here before long. We should mention here in uh, Indianapolis, we've had uh, pretty clear skies today. Most of the clouds have been in the form of airplane contrails. 75 degrees. I just checked my phone. I mean, how lucky are we? We've got fantastic weather here, blue skies. And I did just a minute ago. No, we're not in totality yet, but I put my glasses on because I just wanted to take a peek. Is it safe? Uh, we... I'm not. Uh, and so we are seeing okay. with uh, my glasses on, of course, a bite out of our sun here in Indiana. Of course, it'll get bigger and bigger as we get closer to totality. But what an incredible opportunity. And we should stress again, if you're at home, you got to oh, wear yeah. these special glasses, not typical sunglasses. That won't do it. That may not protect your eyes. It looks don't like let a the kids. looks like a Pac-Man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like a character. A taking a bite but don't let the kids go out and look at the sun without the glasses. yeah absolutely it's, and you know i've had a few people who have tried these on before the eclipse and they say i don't see anything it's black that's the idea <laughs> these are not these are not sunglasses per se these are uh specifically made for for viewing of an eclipse and uh safe wearing is there there is a period though in, in totality that you could safely look yes there is yeah. um they say that when it's completely blocked out you can take your glasses off uh, I may be a little reticent to do that. Yeah, I'm with you, pal. Because, you know, there was a case during the last, uh, the, during the last, uh, I started to say election, don't mean to say election, <laughs> during the last eclipse in which a woman suffered permanent eye damage because she didn't wear special sunglasses. So it is important that we try to do this, do this right. Sure, but uh, we did get that little peek there, and you can now see that uh, it's edging. The moon is now edging over, this, over the sun. Al Roker, uh, Again, watching this all in Dallas. I know, Al, there was concerns that it wouldn't be visible where you are, but it looks like uh, it is. Yeah, you know, Lester, the clouds are kind of coming in and out right now. Again, as I, I said to my our producer, she said, I don't see the sun. I said, well, if, if you look down, you see your shadow, look up, then you'll know you can see the sun. And there you go. And it's, it's just about halfway, uh, maybe a little bit less, but it almost looks like a crescent moon as you're looking at it, looking at the sun right now. Uh, and what's great, let's see some of these kids. Uh, so put your put your glasses down and take a look up. What do you what do you see? Um, that, it, this kind of almost covered the sun. Yeah, it's like halfway covered, isn't it? It kind of looks like the sun is like taking over the moon. The sun is taking, well, the moon is taking over the sun. It's a takeover. The moon, it's a moon takeover. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hostile moon takeover. <laughs> anyway, I mean, and that's, you know, the, the, the joy of these kids is one of the reasons why I know the, the Ross Museum of Nature, uh, the Perot Museum of Nature and Science is here. And that's why we're here. You got bands playing right now. They're, they're playing all these different moon and sun songs. It's, it's pretty, they're, they're, some of them are a little bit of a stretch, but they're, they're still, pretty, it's still pretty good, Lester. Uh, and, and people here are excited. They I are mean, literally, this whole plaza is just lined up with people in beach chairs, just hanging out. I, I gotta tell you, it is, it's really exciting for people to be excited about science. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, you, this is something you would not want to experience alone. Uh, it is such a magical moment. You want to be around people and share the moment. Uh, and we're seeing that in so many cities along the path of this eclipse. Coming up, we're less than 15 minutes away from totality here in the United States. We'll head to one of the first places to get totality in Texas as the nation prepares for the arrival of a total eclipse. Stay with us. Welcome back to our special coverage of the total solar eclipse. You're looking at live pictures from Torreon, Mexico, the next city in the path of the eclipse. Torreon has the distinction of having one of the longest stretches of totality where it's expected to last four minutes and 28 seconds. And the last people in the U.S. to experience totality will be in northern Maine, and that's where we find Kate Snow, She's along with the Canadian border in Holton, Maine, a town with a population of just 6,000 people, but many more expected there today for this incredible event. Kate? 
Yeah, Lester, that is absolutely right. It is a, a small city, right? 6,000 people. Everybody knows everybody. But right now, the plaza behind me here, the town center, is filled with everybody from town, plus probably thousands more who have made the trip here to Holton. And part of the reason is the weather forecast. If you can see the sun shining on my face, we have clear blue skies and really a full sun right now. I want to take you over here and introduce you to a couple of people. This is the area, Lester, where people have set up um, telescopes and equipment to watch the solar eclipse. A lot of these folks would be known as umbrophiles. Josh, do you call yourself an umbrophile? I have never called myself that, sorry. <laughs> well, that's what people who follow solar eclipses. So if you're going to do more than, I know you did 2017, yep. and now you're here with, with your daughter and your nephew and your wife, Jessica, doing this one. Tell me a little bit about your journey, though, to get here, because you thought you were going to go to Uvalde, Texas. I, I did, yep. I booked a hotel six months ago in Uvalde, um, and then about a week ago, I canceled it when the weather looked like it was going to be pretty much clouded out. I then booked another hotel uh -huh. in upstate New York, and then when and that, that turned, out, yeah. and now I went to the farthest place east I could go to get away from the clouds, and here I am. And here you are. And Jessica, you saw 2017 also, right? And yes. you're telling me, you have been telling everyone you know to get outside and watch this eclipse. Why? Yes, uh, I, I was kind of dragged as this partner for the last one in 2017, and uh, and so I was there, and as soon as it happened, I was just blown away. And ever since that, I just said, oh my gosh, when is the next one? And I've just been telling all my friends. We have friends in Texas, in Cleveland, in upstate New York, all over that have reorganized their lives to be there. Josh, this, this weather for your telescope, we can, if you back up a little bit, Bill, you can show this is your, this is your piece, right? Yep. Right yep. here. Is this going to be really, really good weather for you? This is perfect. Yeah. I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, it looks From, it. As far as I can see, it's And it's perfect. a great place, too. Guys, what do you think of this of this town that we're visiting? Is it nice? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen a solar eclipse before? No. I didn't think so. You're too little. How old are you? Five and a half. Five and a half. Okay. Well, maybe this will just be your first one, and then you'll see some more. You think? Yeah. Are you, are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. How about, this is your cousin, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're a little bit older, so yeah. what, do you, what do you think of all of this? What do you think of coming to Maine? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You got some face paint on there. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> you do too, I know. I didn't, I didn't point that out. You have some beautiful, put your arm down for one second, honey, we can see your face paint. It's so pretty. I love it. You know, this has been more than just people who want to see it with their big telescopes. It's, it's an event here. Holton is 6,000 people, Lester. They have never seen anything like this. I was talking to old timers, people who've lived here a long time, who just said that, you know, it's a great town. They love it here, but they've never had an event quite like this one, Lester. All right, Kate, thanks very much. While you were talking, they have now let people here at the Indy 500 to go on the track, which is a very rare occurrence, but so is a total solar eclipse. You guys excited? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, folks have got their, they're, they're handing out the viewing glasses and they're gonna actually stand on the track uh, here at the home of the Indy 500. Pretty a special day in so many ways. So to Careville, Texas now, it's a town of 24,000 residents, but today it's believed to be hosting six times that many people as spectators gather to experience totality there. Careville, Texas also happens to be the hometown of NBC's Morgan Chesky, who was back home today covering the eclipse for us. Morgan, what a great assignment. Uh, Lester, you're really tough to beat this here in the heart of the Texas Hill Country. Thousands of people converging on my hometown for a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And greetings from the penumbra. That's the shadow caused when a partial eclipse is taking place. And that's what we're in the midst of right now. Still about 12 minutes from totality coming over Kerrville. Population 24,000. Certainly swelling well beyond that today. Some people are telling me this eclipse in 2024 might be the biggest thing to come through since the railroad. That was back in 1887, Lester, so you can imagine how significant a moment this is for everyone gathered here. And they come from all over the globe. I met a sweet couple from the Netherlands yesterday, had a chance to speak to another couple who flew in from Vancouver to experience this. They said that this is a spiritual, surreal moment, that you don't quite understand it until you have that perfect alignment and we have sunset but in every direction, and you have that darkness come upon us. We do have patchy clouds right now, Lester, and it's been fun to hear cheers and claps go up whenever we've gotten a peak of the sun as it's begun to disappear behind the moon. 
Uh, yeah, there's another cheer right now. We're keeping our glasses handy. We're going to keep these on, of course, until the perfect alignment takes place. And then I'm going to be right back there in the middle of the crowd. I'm fortunate enough to have my family here. Uh, and right now, to have a front row seat and one of the first ones to witness the great North American eclipse of 2024, uh, it doesn't get any better than this, Lester. Yeah, I'm standing here with my pal, uh, Tom Costello. We're looking at clouds briefly obscuring here in Indianapolis. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like the Apple logo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right about now. You know, what's fascinating is um, the sun is uh, 400 times bigger than the moon. Right, 400 right. times. Uh, and yet, right now, it looks like they're about the same size. That's because it's 400 times further away. So as a result, you get this perfect alignment right now where they come right over or the moon comes right over the sun. But the, make no mistake, the sun is 93 million miles away. And the moon in this particular e eclipse is closer to us. Absolutely. So, so yeah. uh, to, you know, physics tells you the closer something gets to you, the closer it appears, closer it appears. the bigger it appears. Well, millions of us will experience today's eclipse from the ground, but a select few will get to see this event from the sky. Pretty impressive. They'll have a unique perspective of what the moon's shadow looks like from above. NBC's Gotti Schwartz is on a flight along the path of totality. He filed this report right before takeoff. Hey there, what a day to be eclipse chasing from the sky. And right now we're with a company called V-Speed, not just in one jet, but we've actually got two jets. There's gonna be a jet flying on our wing and that jet has the latest and greatest when it comes to aerial cinematography. They have a red camera, Raptor X. It shoots 8K. It is going to be shooting down on planet Earth as that 115 mile wide Umbra sweeps over the United States. It's a view like humankind has never seen before. Meanwhile, we're going to peel off and we're going to go straight into the path of totality to experience it all. And we cannot wait to bring you the view from the cockpit. It is going to be mind blowing. Just wait. Can't wait to see those pictures. Gotti, thanks for that report. Let's bring in NBC's Maura Barrett. She's at Indiana University Stadium in Bloomington, where there is a star-studded eclipse event underway, including Star Trek actor William Shatner. Maura, tell us more. Hey, Lester, I'm just about 50 miles down the road from you, so I'm seeing a very similar Pac-Man uh, in that partial eclipse right now. It's kind of creeping its way slowly across, but we're in central Indiana. The town is a small college town, usually about 50,000 students, and they're expecting that about hundreds of thousands of people have traveled here for this event. The football stadium being compared to a Super Bowl to watch the eclipse. The stands just in front of me are filled up. You can see people picnicking behind me, and a lot of what I've heard about this event Event is the unifying factor. And um, I met a person on the plane actually coming here, Annie. She was coming to meet her college roommate. She hadn't seen them in 20 years, but they're going to be watching the eclipse together. And you can see the thousands of people around me getting ready uh, to watch together as well as totality is coming up in about the next 30 minutes or so. But it really is this unifying emotional event. And I actually got the chance to speak with William Shatner just before as he's going to be doing a spoken word performance leading up to totality. And he spoke to that, that this is an emotional uh, experience. It's huge. Huge that we even know why an eclipse happens, let alone can experience it all together like this across uh, the continent of North America. And he also made an interesting observation uh, that I think is important to note. Basically, he is so interested in space or exploration. He's one of the oldest people to ever go up into space. And he said, what's the point of going up to explore space if you can't come down to a healthy planet? So he talked about the, the need to do both and exploring what we're looking at around us, understanding the universe, but also keeping our planet healthy healthy and tackling the climate crisis. And so that, that was an interesting perspective uh, with from William Shatner, along with uh, astro an astronomer I spoke with here at Indiana University, talking about how this event will connect us to the universe in a way that we have not been able to do, we can't do frequently, uh, and how it gets us even closer to nature. And so just behind me, uh, Mae Dennison, one of uh, the, an astronaut, former astronaut, is speaking right now as we're getting closer and closer to totality, uh, but definitely an exciting moment here uh, in the heartland of Indiana as everyone's getting ready for for totality lester all right mara ter terrific uh i tell you what i tell everybody enjoy the moment we're counting down to the arrival of a total eclipse here in the u.s Careville, texas is one of the very first stops to get totality live pictures now just moments before it plunged into total darkness we'll experience it with you live after a quick break
Welcome back to our special live coverage of the total solar eclipse. We're now just seconds away from experiencing totality here in the U.S. The eclipse will journey across 15 states until it reaches northern Maine. Uh, but tell lies right now on Texas. We want to check in uh, with Telemundo correspondent Valeria Leon, who is in Torreon, Mexico, which actually was the first city in uh, North America to experience the uh, solar eclipse. Hi, Lester, that's correct. I'm in Torreon. Behind me is the National Planetarium and this city. And this is important because the NASA actually choose this location, actually here at the planetarium, as the main center to observe and also to broadcast real time all the images from the eclipse. Here is the biggest telescope of Mexico, and the NASA is actually using it to broadcast those images. And this this location caught the attention of many scientists because uh, it, 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 a special perk. People here at the center line, everybody could experience a total eclipse for 14 seconds more than compared to other areas. That's why people from all over the world came here to Torreon. I've spoken with people uh, from Japan, from Europe, from the U.S. They are super excited and here here we had four, we experienced four, uh, four minutes of the total eclipse. Everybody was so emotional about that moment, Lester. That's the situation we're living here in Torreón. Back to you. Valeria, thanks so much for sharing that with us. We're going to go back now to Morgan Chesky in Kerrville, Texas. As we enter the final countdown for the start of totality there, Morgan, the big moment, big moment is finally here. Take us there. Lester, it's all happening. The glasses are off. We are in the Umbra. The great North American eclipse is happening right now above us. Oh, my God. Look, this is incredible. I'm with the Cox Gerard family from Phoenix. Guys, soak it up. What? <laughs> Was this worth the drive from Phoenix? <laughs> Lester, the clouds are coming in and out. There it is. Oh. oh my gosh, that's so cool. You can absolutely see those prominences coming off the edge of the corona there, Lester. Oh my goodness. Oh. And you are in the dark. I, listen to that cheer. It's clear again. Lester, well, know that we're sharing the moment with you here in Indianapolis. They've got it on. They've got it on the big screen, and what, seeing what you see. Lester, the broadcaster in me wants to narrate this play by play. The human in me wants to witness this right alongside family and friends. I'm joined now by my fam here. Little 10 month old Eleanor about to get her very first eclipse. I know it's a lot to take in, honey, but Olivia. Oh, it's a lot. I know, I know. I wouldn't be anywhere else other than with you all right now. Babe, thank you. Thank you is she hanging in there? She is. I think it scared her a little. <laughs> Look, what was it like uh, to see that, babe? Emotional. Brought tears through my eyes. Yep. So 50% of first-time Eclipse viewers, they are struck by that emotional moment. Lester, yes. hang in there, baby. Um, Lester, I have to tell you, here we are. Uh, no glasses, no visors needed. Great. We are in that shadow. It's unreal. The temperature dropping now about eight degrees. Take a look here, Juliet, keeping our eye on the thermometer here. And look at that. This is what everyone came here for from all over the world to Kerrville, Texas, to witness this moment in time. We may never have another moment like this, and that's why it was so special for everyone in the darkness around me to witness this moment. Lester, they say yeah, and more, for your more first than... eclipse, soak it in. <laughs> the second is the one you take pictures because you do not want to have this moment interrupted. Yes. Oh, wow. I've seen one before from a plane, Lester. This one shared by so many others is powerful. And it looks like you're, you're, in, uh, you're in totality for four minutes and 24 seconds there, one of the longer uh, exposures or places that will be in that umbra. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's so bizarre to see behind you and realize that's daytime. Absolutely. It feels cooler. The wind has died down, and everyone is in awe right now 
of this four minutes and 24 seconds, which I have to tell you is feeling a little like an eternity right now. We, the buildup was so strong as we saw the moon slide in front of the sun that when it finally happened, you almost had to pinch yourself. People have been planning for this for years, and now it's finally here. Uh, hey, it's hey, okay. Hey. Are, you, are you loving this moment right now? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unfreaking believable. <laughs> and when you saw that corona from around the sun, how did that feel? Uh, it's deeply emotional. Emotional? Deeply emotional. Absolutely. How can you not be emotionally impacted by this? Lester, I want to check back in with the Car Cox Jarred family with the custom t shirts. Guys, the buildup was huge. We saw it. How are we feeling? Amazing. What was your favorite part? Oh, when it just turned black when it was day and it just dimmed. What were you seeing around the edge of the moon? Like it was, it kind of looked like a ring. So it was like kind of like the gold. Mm -hmm. And Dad, what about you? I know that you're probably one of the most excited ones here. Yeah. <laughs> Super excited. I love hearing the uh, joy behind me with uh, when all of that went down. But yeah, this was. I wasn't sure we were going to see it. So to get the waves of it yeah. was even more exciting. First one. Yeah, oh yeah. 50% of people get emotional. How, how'd you fare? It, I did good this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so good. and Lester, we have my mom Sandy here. She not only she here for mom, she not only made the shirts but brought the fam. As we leave totality, how are you feeling to have your whole family here to witness this? We still have two in New Jersey, but it's wonderful to have this group here. Ah. This is our daughter and our kids. Yes. Love it. Look at that, guys. Daylight coming back. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's beautiful. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. So get your glasses ready. Yeah. Uh, thank y'all so much for letting us share this with you. Uh, All right, Lester, Morgan, I, thanks for bringing that incredible uh, moment. It's funny you, it, you mentioned emotion, and I can feel the emotion from here watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We'll send it back to you, but an incredible moment here in Kerrville that absolutely delivered. When you see that ring, there's nothing like it. Lester? Yeah, well, we're waiting our turn expectantly here in Indianapolis. Morgan, thank you. Uh, Al Roker, uh, you know that experience, that, that emotion of seeing this kind of thing. Yeah, I absolutely do, Lester. And we've got a couple of folks here. We've got Dr. Nicolene Bale, uh, Bile, uh, from she's an astrophysicist at NASA Goddard, Dr. Jeff Rich. And you can see people here getting very excited. We're going to talk to you guys in just a sec. But it's starting to get dim. And if you look at the shadows, look at how high definition the shadows are becoming. And this, what are you doing with this, Doctor? So this is a pinhole projector, and I'm making images of the crescent moon coming in oh, front of the Oh, you can sun. see it right there. Wow. So what do you think, guys? How exciting is this? Good. Very really? exciting. Okay, let's, we're going to put the, it's get, starting to get dim now, which is kind of interesting. So we put the glasses on, and you can see, you know, we're just about there, right, Doctor? Almost there, yep. Almost, almost. It's, if you, we can still see a tiny bit of sun, as soon as that sun is gone, it's going to be spectacular. That's what I'm looking I'm looking for the Bailey's beads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Will we be able to see them? Of, of, of... It depends. So it depends on the precise uh, lineup of the moon and the moon's valleys. Okay. It's getting darker now. And we've got these great kids. What do you, you've got a NASA shirt. Are you a space fan? I am a space fan, also a meteorologist from oh. Denver. So. Oh, there you fan go. Of yours. Very good. Are you guys excited about seeing your first your I first solar excited. exit? You got your glasses ready? Yep. All right, here we go. Okay, guys, let's get them on, okay, because it's, it's starting to come. Wow, look at this. We've got some folks here. Yeah. Is this going to be your first? Is it going to be your first uh, eclipse? Well, I came in 2017, same place here, uh -huh. partial eclipse, and I had on a solar dress. All over. right, well, let's get ready. Here we go. Wow, this is really amazing. And everybody's getting kind of quiet. What's your name? Um, Wally. Are you excited about this, Wally? Yes, I have. I haven't seen any eclipse yet. You haven't seen any eclipse? Well, you're going to be able to say you did. Put your glasses on. No. Dr. Vile, is this your first eclipse? This is my second total eclipse. I got to see the 2017 one. Oh, wow. It's so amazing, though. This is great. It's starting to get dark. Look at this. Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. You probably can't with those out. Yeah. Lester, this is amazing. I can't wait for this for you. 
Oh, yeah, the uh, we've got so much excitement here, here in Indianapolis. I got a little young man here. What's your name? Billy. Billy, what are you what are you in line for? What are you gonna see here today? The eclipse. Here we go. What do you think? Tell us what an eclipse yeah. is. So the moon is gonna Woo. come over the sun. That's exactly it. Well, thanks for being here. Enjoy. Maybe we'll talk to you on the other side of it because right now where Al is, they are in totality, I believe. Oh my god, almost Lester. There it goes. Yeah! Woo! Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah! There are the beads! There are the beads! You saw, oh, look at this! Look at this! Whoa! Yeah! Oh, look at that! We've got our glasses off right now, Lester, looking at the Umbra. And it is just amazing. Oh, look, we can see Venus. We can see Venus over there. What's that? And Jupiter is to the left. So we can see Jupiter to the left, Venus to the right. Oh, wow. How exciting it is, Doctor. I, I want to see every eclipse. I, and it's just... I thought we're going to be eclipse junkies from now on. Oh my gosh! So we're seeing the corona right now. This is the atmosphere of the sun. We never get to see it except during the eclipses. How exciting! Is this like your Super Bowl? This is my Super Bowl. I study the corona, and I have to wait for NASA to take images of it. But now I get to see it with my own eyes. Oh wow! Oh, I mean, it really. And look, there's a plane about to go over. Just. To, <laughs> oh. All right, is this exciting? Yes. It's amazing. You guys excited? Yes. I'm so excited. Was it like anything you expected? I've never experienced anything like this. Nothing. Nothing. In your entire life. No. In your whole long entire life. In my whole life. Oh, my life, gosh. Oh. Oh, my. Lester, this is, you will, it's unbelievable. And the skies are crystal clear right now. It's like a sign from God. Literally. We had clouds all morning. It's completely clear. The clouds meet the moment. Awesome. Oh my gosh, Lester. It's it's everybody's looking. It's still dark. I mean it's like it's like nighttime. I'm sorry. You can see a little bit of red at the six o'clock at the bottom. It's like a tiny prominence. Yeah. Oh now now it's starting to come out. Is it coming out now? This is uh, a prominence, a uh, uh, magnetic field that filled with plasma is peeking out from around the moon. The little red piece. Oh my gosh, I can see that red bee. Yes. That's something you can only see during an eclipse unless you have really special equipment. Just see it with your eyes. So the prominences sometimes explode and have coronal mass ejections that come towards the Earth sometimes, and they can interfere with our electronics. So those are the kinds of things that NASA studies, those prominences. Oh. Uh, do you think you're going to get a, a, a treasure trove of information out of this? Definitely. Oh. Wow, look at this. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is just amazing. It Lester, like it does. It's, this is like nighttime out here right now. Al, let me ask you, but, uh, Tom and I here in Indianapolis yeah. were just talking about how much cooler it's already gotten. Are you feeling the same thing? Is it getting cooler? You know, it hasn't gotten that much cooler, Lester, interestingly enough. We've got a thermometer here. It was at 80 degrees uh, before we started. And it, it, it's pretty much, it's pretty much the same temperature, 80 degrees. Okay, yeah. And yeah, the humidity, they, well, the humidity level goes up, I guess, during, during this time. And winds, and we understand the winds actually drop because of the lack of solar radiation. So, oh my gosh. Well, I cannot believe amazing. that right. red, that red dot. That, it's a prominence, a solar prominence. It's this magnetic field that's holding this plasma up in the corona. And they explode a lot. And uh, wow. Yeah. You look like you're overcome, Doc. I mean, I, I've seen an eclipse before. Like I said, I want to see every eclipse. It's such an emotional experience. All right, it's coming out now. Oh, got to put your glasses. Everybody's glasses back on. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Lester, this is just unbelievable. So was it just enveloped in the clouds? I mean, all we see is white now. No, they're, they're, I think we're...
Now it's out. It's it, it's just it's just Doctor. Why is it so bright now? Well, the sun is so much brighter than the atmosphere of the sun. So even a tiny piece of the photosphere of the sun just lights it up and swamps all the. That's the right. Rest of the sun. And shadows are coming back again. Look look at these shadows. How beautiful they are. Whoa. This is incredible. Oh my. Uh, all right. Well, here you hold it. You guys can you keep that. That's good. That's you can you can keep that. And now, Lester, the sun's coming out, and look at our shadows again. Very high definition. That's what. Now, what what causes that, Doctor? Uh, it's the the light, and the right now what you're getting is the um, you're getting projections of the image of that last bit of sunlight coming through, and that's why the you get these crescent shapes and why you get those sharp shadows. Wow. Lester, this is just unbelievable, and now everybody, I mean, people are kind of, kind of quiet. It's, it was kind of awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. My gosh, and, and I, Lester, I think that's one of the, one of the great things about this, is that it's a shared experience. Everybody here is all part of something that we all shared together. And, and I, I, for one, am never going to forget this. And Dr. Jeff Rich, Dr. Nicolene Bile, Bile, thank you so much for being part of this for us. It was, it really helped. Uh, and the band is playing Here Comes the Sun. I love it. This is great here at, at <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I, I've got to tell you, uh, and Tom, you know what? I don't know what it is. I mean, it would be, maybe because we were, we were on a boat, on a ship. Uh, but there's something that's even more special about this one this time. And, and uh, even though I'm not with you, because I know we're psychically bonded uh, by, by our, <laughs> our eclipse experience. <laughs> I think the biggest difference, Al, is the temperature, because you and I were standing on an aircraft carrier in, yeah. in uh, Charleston in August, and it was hot with a capital H. This is a little bit more reasonable yeah. in terms of the temp. We're not standing on a frying pan. It, it, that's it exactly. Tom. I want to. I want to. I, I just want to go to our 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 local reporter uh, at here at KXAS, Tahara Rockman. Uh, Tahara, what was that like for you? It was incredible. And you know, we've been talking about how so many people who view the eclipse for the first time, 60%, get emotional. Well, guys, that was me. Uh, tears were coming out of my eyes as I viewed this for the first time. I was trying to get a few glimpses while I was watching other people's reactions. And I'm going to step away from the camera a little bit so you can see the crowd behind me because there are roughly about 3,000 people here at the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens. And just like everywhere else during totality, the cheers erupted. You saw, you heard people say, wow, wow. People were pointing their phones up. People were also filming other people's reactions because I think that's part of the experience is sharing that reaction with everybody else. So we saw a lot of that. And then just like where you are right now, Al, we heard it go quiet. It was for the rest of yes. the three minutes or so, people were just kind of soaking it all in and, and, and getting, getting kind of like letting it sit in their souls. That's yeah. how I felt at least. And so it's been an incredible experience here. We also felt the temperatures drop a little bit, which is great because it's been very humid here mm -hmm. in Texas, as you know. Um, so all in all, an incredible and memorable experience. So well, Tahara Rockman from our station KXAS, thank you so much. And as wonderful as this view was, I think our good friend Gotti Schwartz has an even more amazing view. Gotti is over Texas right now. That could have been Gotti flying over during this. Gotti, tell us what you're seeing. Oh, we may have lost uh, the signal bad. You know, as you might imagine, uh, when you're when you're flying, the technical uh, issues can be even greater, uh, but Gotti was in a flight that took off. Yes, Lester? Yeah, no, I was going to say, uh, Gotti's in an airplane with a special high-speed camera in the nose, uh, tricked out for just this kind of mission. We'll try to get back to him in a minute. I want to bring in right now, if I can, uh, Danny Milosevic, Associate Professor of Physics and Astronomy at Purdue. He's the lead on the James Webb Space Stellis Telescope. Thank you for coming by here. Thanks I just want the invitation, man. We have been watching, and hopefully you've been seeing the monitor. We've been watching, you know, as the path of totality moves to various places. I'm looking around. I'm not sure folks here know what they're in store for quite yet. I mean, it's an incredible uh, event. 
You know, the, you know what both uh, astronomy and show business share? The need for timing, and that's what's <laughs> happening today, okay? The, the moon, planet Earth, and the sun are aligning. And, it, and the last time it happened on this spot was 800 years ago. And so pretty soon, in just you know minutes from now, the moon is gonna be just the right distance and just the right size to cover the, the sun. And we're gonna see a, in a remarkable event. Basically, it's the most cosmic event you can experience with but it's but it's on the ground. But it's happening right now. As we stand here, it is noticeably dimmer. Exactly, yes. It's it's really starting to ramp up with uh, the, the, the noticeable differences. You were commenting about the cool breeze, right? Yeah. The temperature change, and there's this gradual change in the lighting that's that's different from a, a sunrise or sunset. All right, shadows coming across your face now. That's right, that's right. All effect of uh, the, 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 the way that the moon is passing in front of the sun. All right, well, we're told they're nearing totality in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Chase Gaines is there for us from our uh, climate unit. Chase, uh, describe what you're seeing and who you're with. Uh, well, Lester, we are just entering totality. I, I have to tell you, I've never experienced this. I thought I knew what to expect, but um, I, I didn't expect this. You may be able to hear some kids off in the background. Folks have gathered here at a nature preserve uh, just outside Little Rock, Arkansas, because uh, we wanted to talk about the, some of the changes, what nature does, how birds and insects, wildlife respond. Jason Milks, uh, forester and nature ecologist with the Nature Conservancy here with his 12-year-old daughter, Hannah Lee, uh, first of all i gotta ask you we are in oh my gosh actually let's walk up here so we can take a look at this we are in totality now it just went to totality uh we're going to talk to jason about some of the changes that we've heard uh birds making more noises we heard you know we saw turtles that were on a log that kind of went into the water we are looking at totality for the first time jason what's uh what's going through your mind yeah it's it's pretty yeah, it's obviously pretty special we're sitting there at the creek and watching all the activity on the wetlands starting to increase fish sort of hitting the surface it's uh yeah it's pretty surreal and Hanley, this is your first uh for your first eclipse looking out at looking up at this uh what do you what do you think i think it's pretty cool honestly i like how it just shines around the moon honestly and it's fun to see all the animals act up at night anything you notice with the animals if, as we were sitting back there just a minute ago they get very active now. The fish were jumping out of the water a lot, so. All right, well, let's walk back down here by the water, because, uh, again, the point we, the, the reason that we chose this spot um, is to be in nature and, and see and hear uh, some of those changes, because obviously we as people, we've known for a long time this was going to happen, right? But birds and insects aren't exactly watching NBC News, although we, we would welcome that, right? Um, so, so, Jason, we talked earlier about some of the different ways that nature might respond, different categories. Um, describe, and we could even be quiet for a moment and try and hear some of this, but describe what you've noticed in the last few minutes. I think we were talking about behaviors being in a couple of different groups, either not responding or starting their nighttime routines, which I think we're starting to see out here on this wetland. Also, potential anxiety. I haven't really seen any birds acting anxious. And then that fourth group of just sort of novel, weird stuff, which I don't think we've seen yet. But out here at the Ranch Northwoods, we've got this cool forest. We've got fields. We've got this wetland here, lots of different varieties of animals to come in and interact with. And it, I, I'm unsure how much of this you can hear on TV, but uh, I mean, you can hear crickets, you can hear insects, just to, just like it is at sunset. Uh, we had some turtles that were sunning on a log here because it was about 85 degrees here this afternoon. Those turtles slid off and went into the water as the sun started to go down. Um, been keeping an eye on the temperature. Right before we came on TV, the temperature had already dropped nine degrees here. So a pretty, uh, a pretty incredible shift. Hanley, what do you what are you thinking right now as you look out across this uh, this wetland? Spooky, honestly, because all of the trees coming out of the water. Does it feel like sunset? Does it feel like sunrise? Does it feel a little different? Sunset, definitely, because it's getting colder. I wonder, are we shifting back out now? 
Yeah, yeah, let's walk, let's walk, uh, let's walk back up because it looks like our, our window here in totality uh, is coming to an end. Um, but I have to say, I mean, we're starting to, you know, hear birds. Um, they're not exactly sure if it was sunset, if it was sunrise. Uh, now we come back out to this. So, you know, if we, if we had wildlife sort of heading to the nest, heading, heading home uh, as we went into totality, uh, I mean, what do you think? In just a few minutes, are they going to sort of like reemerge? Like, hey, yeah. what happened here? I think you may, you know, we've heard more birds starting to sing you'll probably i would expect to hear more birds much like morning dawn um yeah it is it's it's a very dawn like experience when you say I, I also just see the smile on your face yeah. i mean people told me that like until you experience totality you haven't experienced an eclipse. Uh, it, it, how, how do you put it into words? I mean, it seems like you're just feeling a lot of joy right now. Yeah, I think it's joy for sure. Yeah, Having this moment with my daughter, being out in nature um, as a as a profession, it's a sort of a spiritual place already. But to have something that's once in a what, life. What an amazing time, perspective, Chase did. Arkansas. The last one here was over 100 years ago, and the next one may be longer than that. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's a real privilege yeah and, and we certainly appreciate you being here with us and uh telling us exactly what we were hearing from nature uh but that is totality as we are coming back into the sunlight here at the william kirsch nature preserve and little rock lester we'll yeah, back Chase, to what a, a great perspective on all this uh, how nature responds almost like nature's jet lag if you will uh here in indianapolis it is noticeably dimmer it's getting dimmer by the moment as we near uh, a, a total eclipse. Tom Costello back with me here at Indianapolis as well. Tom, that was a great science lesson we just saw there on, on what, how nature is responding to this. NASA's got its own experiments trying, trying to learn some things from this, these, these brief moments of totality. Exactly. So NASA has, during this, they have already lifted off several rockets from Wallops out in Virginia, three rockets, and they will deploy experiments. And they want to get a better handle on the ionosphere. That's the upper atmosphere that we have on Earth, and it separates the atmosphere from Earth. And then something else, they're trying to get a better understanding of the corona. Here's what a lot of people don't know. The sun is 10,000 degrees, Lester, 10,000. But the outer atmosphere of the sun is 2 million degrees. Why would that be? If you walk away from a campfire, normally it gets cooler. In this case, it gets hotter. They think it's because there are heat bombs that go off, and that's what they want to understand. We will take a break as this uh, solar eclipse makes its way uh, north and uh, eastward from uh, where we are here. Uh, we've seen it in Texas and in Oklahoma, Indiana, Little Rock. And we will be back with more in a moment. Good afternoon, or maybe I should say good evening from what it appears to be a here in Indianapolis. I'm Lester Holt. Welcome back to our special coverage of the total solar eclipse. You're joining us as people across the U.S., from astronomers to enthusiasts alike, experience a moment few see more than once in a lifetime. Right now, the eclipse is about halfway along its path of totality here in the U.S. It's currently in Carbondale in southern Illinois, which is considered the eclipse crossroads of America. The city was in the center line of the path of totality during the 2017 eclipse, and it is again now. So there's been tremendous interest in viewing the eclipse from Carbondale. We're moments away from a total eclipse right here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're looking forward to experiencing that. The shadow of the moon has already moved through Texas and Arkansas. And now this hour, it enters the Midwest and Northeast. Even those not in the path of totality will experience a partial eclipse, making this a rare moment where so many people are looking at the same thing at the same time. It is absolutely remarkable. It's a sight most Americans won't see again for another 20 years. Where we are in Indianapolis, as I was speaking, it is noticeably getting grayer and darker. I'm just going to put on my protective glasses here so I can describe a little bit of what we can see. <laughs> And we are very close, Tom. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning and breathtaking. I mean, everybody, 
uses the same descriptions. Uh, we are going to have three minutes and 47 seconds here in Indianapolis. We actually go into totality here at 3.06.06 Eastern Time. Uh, and this is just a phenomenal day. We have had really good weather, uh, blue skies, very light clouds, and really warm. It is cooling down dramatically. And there are families and families and families who have gathered on the track at the Indy 500 uh, racetrack. This is uh, one of the official viewing sites for NASA. People uh, showed up here starting uh, early in the morning, and they've been um, just like it was race day. Uh, it's in, a family in, event. Join the really crowd. Is. But when you come for the race, you don't get to stand on the track. So that's, that's a big event. But this <laughs> is a huge event that we are witnessing right now. I want to bring in, if I can, uh, Drew Foistel, NASA astronaut veteran of three space lights, 23 year career. You know, we're all lay people. We're enjoying this moment. You're a professional. How does this make you feel? Uh, this is incredible to me as well. I mean, oh, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> and uh, it, what's great is like the lights getting kind of strange right. now. We don't experience that as humans, unless you've seen one before, and not a lot of us have. Uh, everything changes, and we're going to realize in a hurry, in about what four or five minutes how much we rely on the sun to keep us alive. It's yeah. getting cold, it's gonna get dark, it's gonna get a little scary. You know, my minutes. friend Tom was going over some data here today about how much we still don't know about the sun. Yeah. And so we were talking about, you know, NASA's experiments they're gonna do during the, during this period. What is the what is the biggest mystery about the sun? What What is unsolved? Uh, well, I mean, it's hard to study for one thing because it's really hot, so it's hard yeah. to get close. We have some great instruments out in space that have been studying the moon for a long, or the sun for a long time. But when we get into a total eclipse, and those those energy rays, those uh, uh, em emissions from the side of the sun come out, you can see the magnetic rays, the waves coming off the side. That's when the scientists really want to take a look at those coronal uh, ejections, those things coming out of the side. That's the interesting part of the sun. Makes yeah. it easy to see it. Because that interferes with our own systems here, our communications, our satellites, our power grid, when they have a huge magne magnetic storm. It does, it does, absolutely. I mean, we don't we, we understand how the sun works but what the critical thing is like we need all that stuff if the sun didn't do what it does we wouldn't be alive on this planet we Here's have a, to have the sun this is a live picture of carbondale now it's slipping out of totality uh That's rather amazing. quickly and, and, and we mentioned that carbondale was kind of the center line of the path so therefore it was visible for a longer period of time yeah. Yeah. yeah the science is amazing i mean we uh this happens you know two times a year we have opportunities to uh take a look at you know potentially see eclipses in the it world just, you mean in the world, in the world yep. yeah and uh just so happens we're going to get to see it here really soon in indianapolis what are you most excited to see in the next few moments here we're at uh let's see we're at 304 the, now the, about two the reaction of the crowd and you're starting to hear you it now, now. It oh, this, this is things are going to get really weird here in a second as well because this isn't the best part the best part is when we're in the i'm going to take out my regular glasses and i'm going to switch to uh Daddy. switch to my yeah, protective give it glasses another minute or two. as it's i watch be this impressive. moment I know, but look at this this is something I've wanted to see for a very long time. Yeah, and uh, you know, if there were animals here and birds, we'd hear them stop sort of making noise and they're kind of wondering what's going on as well. So this is the time to see it. You know, the, the moon uh, does, is not in a regular orbit. It's in a, kind of an elliptical orbit. It's the same with the, with the Earth. Look at this. Goodness. Look at that, that's beautiful. It it's, makes you speechless. It's just it? sliding away. It's like some, somebody with a light behind a keyhole, and look at that. You know, we are all, we are all to quote Crosby, Stills, and, and Nash, we are really stardust. Yeah. We're a part of this. And, and to watch it go down like this. We're all in it together. Moving. That's right. That sun is really you know, Tom, you know, Tom, you and I cover a lot of, uh, a lot of difficult things to report sometimes, but this is, uh, this is magical. It is. I think it's a it's a moment in which all of us feel connected to each other as members of the human family, but also to the galaxy, to the Milky Way, and what happens in our heavens. We are we are in a sea of strangers right now who are united by this moment to look up at the heavens. Now you can take them off. I think, Lester, we're getting there. We're there. I think we're in totality. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Look at the look at the Beautiful. That's awesome. Are you doing? What do you see? 
It's so cool. It's so cool. It's, it's, it's like a, a ring of fire. It's like a ring of fire, except it's, yeah. except it's getting blocked out by the moon. Can you yeah. see some of the it's craters crazy. on the moon as well? What does it make you feel inside to see this? It's like amazing. Like the next, like we are not going to be able to see one of these in a long time. Yeah. So it's really just about 20 amazing years. Video. I'm so happy you guys got to experience this. This is so neat. How you doing? I would love to say my mother, say hello to my mother, <laughs> who we miss. She's with us today. Oh, it's wonderful. Hello, Donnie. I just felt, I just felt a drop. Did you feel a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. But look at that. That's so poignant that people feel connected that they want to say hello to family members who passed. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, every, you know, cameras are out. Everyone's looking skyward. Drew? Drew, you're the you're the professional among us, but you're sitting there. <laughs> I don't, I don't you're know if I'm looking up like the rest I mean, of us. I'm like, as wow. amazed as as we all are, and you can see the little the little spots of orange around the sides of the moon as the sun's kind of peeking around through yeah. the craters and the and the uh, as the sun rays are coming around the craters of the moon. I, I see a little red. Those little there. orange spots, right? It's okay. kind of peeking around the sides. I see sides. it. I see you can it. almost see the front side of the moon with the with the light wrapping around the side of it, that gray haze. But it's incredible. This is when the researchers want to take a look at the moon. And, and look through the moon and see what's happening around the sun. Is that, All a, planet, is that a planet off to the right? Yep, right. we got a planet down there, which may be Venus. I don't know. That's yeah. my best guess. Uh, I mean, you have you, you've orbited the Earth countless times. Well, remember, we're only 250 miles away, ah. so it's not that far. That sun is 98 million miles away, right. and the moon's 250,000 miles away. So yeah. everything's pretty far from us. See that orange? Yeah, that little, that little yeah. spot. Yep. And pretty soon the sun's going to start peeking around, and we won't be able to look at it anymore. Yeah, we'll it only the takes a sliver, and it's going to hurt our eyes to look at it. Really? It's incredible. It's that right. Yeah. I mean, that sun keeps us alive. That's it. Let me talk to a few more folks here. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. What, what's it like to see this? Uh, it's it, for him. It's a dream come true. For me, it's like watching him tear up just brings so much joy because he remembers this 30 what how many years ago many years ago <laughs> With so his mom, my mom yeah. always promised me a trip to the moon so this is as close as we get she's taking it there yeah what was your mom's name ann laken yeah. all the kids call her nani when, when did you lose her uh two years december and uh you know 1969 watching the first moon landing together she made it an event that we would never forget this is to her well, she's with you today thank you thank you for talking to us there's a uh, there's listen i'm caught up in the emotion too it's uh you don't know what to expect you go into this thinking well it's just gonna be nighttime for a few minutes yeah kind of but not really this is um this is something i've never quite seen i've seen a partial eclipse before uh al roker you've certainly been through this before uh, but that that wave of emotion, I think, surprises. Oh my goodness! Here it comes. Okay, that's the so we're gonna we're gonna take. Now we got to put our glasses take, back we're on. We're gonna take the glasses off. <laughs> yep. Oh, where are the glasses? Take... What do I do with my glasses? Where are my glasses? Yeah. Oh, God. Don't, look no, no. Don't look up. Don't look up. But nature is getting a standing ovation. A standing ovation. People are just thrilled. It was funny to watch them here the last several hours, not knowing what to expect, but the sun peeking back out yeah. now. That's the amazing thing, Lester. As much as you can you can describe it to people, there's nothing like being here. I mean, it's just it, it's really one of these once in a lifetime, in a sense, events. I mean, like for example, here in Texas and Dallas, they have another. A uh, total solar eclipse until 2317. So uh, uh, the people were really excited about this to see this, and I'm so thrilled for you to be able to tell your grandchildren that you uh, actually saw this total eclipse. That's special. Well, hopefully they're watching. <laughs> hopefully they're watching. But this is a this, and this is not over. The uh, we're gonna we're gonna watch this. Uh, this eclipse as it continues to play out over the uh, United States, much wider area than we saw in 2017. It's the, uh, the light slowly, light level slowly coming up here on the track. Amazing. Yeah, what's interesting, Lester, is that our forecast was, was, you know, not very good for a good portion of the country at the beginning of the week. 
and uh, and even up until last night. And, and in fact, we were worried about severe thunderstorms here in Dallas. And I got to tell you, uh, uh, it's cleared out, and a lot of along the path, it has cleared out. Uh, so I'm, I, I just think it's fantastic. Yeah, this is uh, it, it's it, the weather cooperated. Speaking of the weather, the temperature has probably dropped. I'm going to guess 8 to 10 degrees since we came out a couple of hours ago. We could steadily feel it getting cooler. A very gentle breeze out right now. And I did think I felt a, uh, a slight drop on my arms. I don't know if there was some moisture in the atmosphere, or maybe it was my tears. <laughs> There's always that possible. I was going to say, I think we it's won't have like, another one here. Discharge coming from your eyes, Lester. Yeah. There you go. We won't, this will not return to Indianapolis until 2153. So I've already made my hotel reservations. <laughs> That's 129 years from now. We'll be back. Next time, take the day off and just enjoy the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. wow. So, Le Lester, has, the... has yeah. India, anybody noticed that it's ever been that quiet for all... <laughs> with people in there? <laughs> well, it was, uh, yeah, there was... It was a pretty, the crowd, I think, was kind of milling around with uh, kind of like, well, what happens now? And then suddenly we, we saw the reaction as, as the uh, as the moon essentially covered the, the heart of the... People are, were largely speechless. And for a lot of people, it is an emotional uh, experience. It, it can even be a religious experience, I think, for a lot of people. And in which they, like, like we said, they feel connected with each other. And they feel connected with the planet and what's beyond the planet. And, and you and I were talking earlier about just this event. You know, the events we cover in our day-to-day -day jobs sometimes are pretty rough and, and difficult. And, and, uh, and to be able to come to a story like this, in which people are sharing a moment, a happy moment, uh, a moment of you know, mystery, uh, it's, to be a part of that is really special. You know, I have been so fortunate that you guys have assigned me to cover space and aviation, but space, because everybody loves space. Yeah. Everybody is a bit of a space geek. Yeah. On a, on a, on true, true, heard that. True, yeah, yeah. number one. I'm a space geek. And everybody yeah. enjoys this topic. Topic. And it doesn't matter what level you're coming yeah. in on, everybody loves it. All right, well, the show's not over. We're going to move to Cleveland now. That's where we find That's right. Jesse Kirsch. Jesse, is your crowd ready? Lester, we're in the middle of it right now. Totality is unfolding uh, right as you're coming to us. This crowd is starting to get jazzed up. We've literally got tens of thousands of people rocking out here in Cleveland. We are down the block from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They have delayed the first pitch for the home opener for the Cleveland Guardians. So there are people in the ballpark. They're not saying play ball until this thing's over. And we are now on the lakefront at one of the official NASA events. And we've got 11-year-old Dylan over here. This is your second time seeing one of these. Take a look at that. What do you think of what's going on up there in the sky, Dylan? I think it's pretty crazy that this only happens like in every few years. It's the full eclipse in America twice. When you look up and you see the, the moon completely in front of the faces of the sun there, what does that image say to you? I think it just say, it says that it's nighttime, but <laughs> around it is sun coming. Lester, we're going to head into the crowd here, and off on the horizon, I'm going to have our photographer, Dana, pan off of me. You can see it almost looks like sunset, sunrise combined here on the shores of Lake Erie. This is just an unbelievable thing to be witnessing. We've got close to four minutes of totality here, according to NASA. We've met people who've come from across the country, people who've come from Oh, across the pond, uh, I met a family from the UK. They decided to make the trip here. They made the call last week to come out here. Uh, and we've been talking a lot about the weather leading up to this. And that was certainly a factor people were worried about. So much so that we met one couple from Virginia who was supposed to be going uh, to Texas. They pivoted, decided on Cleveland because they thought they had a better shot. They had travel booked. They rebooked. Virginia. This is your second time seeing this. Well, yeah. uh, you know what this was going to feel like, but what's it like seeing it again? Isn't it incredible? Like, I do, I want to start crying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, we're looking uh, up at something that Noni's seen before, but her husband, Mike, you've, you've never seen this. No, I have not. What's it like seeing this for the first time? It's pretty amazing. I had no idea it was going to be this spectacular, but uh, it's really awesome. It's really an experience. Don't look at me. We only got like 90 seconds of this <laughs> left. Well, what's it like looking up and seeing that? It's pretty neat. I, I had no idea that, you know, I didn't know about the diamond ring or Bailey's bead. So being able to see all that and listen to the NASA announcer 
it's a pretty educational experience. Le feeling the temperature drop was chilling to say the least, pardon the pun. But it, it feels like a cool summer night out it here. It does, it does. And listening to all the birds go quiet, it was total different environment. And Lester, I, I, for people who have, might remember from 2017, we had some weather issues in parts of the country then, too. I was in Carbondale, Illinois, and we had cloud cover over this stadium filled with people for most of totality. And so I can tell you, someone who only got seconds last time around uh, to be seeing this and having it just hovering up there with that glow around the edges is just remarkable. And Noni, you've seen this before, but why did you need to see it again? You know what? Honestly, because my brother got the shot and I didn't. I wasn't prepared. This is all for the Instagram post. I, yes, I wasn't prepared, so I, d I got all my filters. I got everything this time. And, uh, I mean, I, I can't even say enough. Like, this is incredible. I did not get anything that remotely looked like this the last time. Lester. It was just such a great experience the last time, having it get dimmer. Everybody starts cheering. Everybody is like... Jesse, thank you. You know, it was only a few days ago on the East Coast. Everyone was saying, did you feel it, talking about an earthquake? And now here we are a few days later uh, saying, did you see it? My daughter just texted me uh, photos from Washington, D.C., and the images they have of the eclipse. It looks to me like it's about 95%. It's a really? pretty good eclipse. So they, they got darkness there. They, they've got a good, a good chunk of it is gone in yeah. Washington anyway. All right, NBC's Ryan Nobles is back at his alma mater, SUNY uh, Brockport, for a very special homecoming uh, in New York there. Yeah, hey, Lester, uh, and, you know, there's quite a bit of clouds here in Brockport, unfortunately, but I have to tell you, uh, the last 30 seconds or so has been pretty remarkable. Uh, even though we can't really actually see the sun from where we are right now, uh, it got a little eerie as it just got gradually and gradually more dark, and we're expecting uh, totality at 319, so we're, like, basically in the window right now, and I'm really just on vacation with my family here. We actually went uh, to the eclipse seven years ago in South Carolina. Esther, do you remember that? Do you remember that experience? No. No? <laughs> How does it compare right now? I mean, is it getting, a, it's a little weird that it's getting so dark, right? Yeah, it's getting dark. Oh. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. What do you think so far? It's dark and everybody's cheering. Everybody's cheering, right. And so these are some of the students uh, from Brockport where I went to college. I mean, what, what does it mean for you guys to have, you know, this kind of, spe oh my gosh, I got just got a lot of that is incredible. It Wait, is, so is it incredible? Yes, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you like, probably were a little bummed that the clouds, there were so many yeah, clouds, but yeah. is this still yeah. pretty a remarkable no, I mean, experience? Yeah. Like, look at it. It is dark right now. Oh, look at that. Oh, you can actually start to feel it get even more dark. It's almost like wow. somebody shut the lights off just in the last 20 seconds. Oh, my God. You're putting your glasses on now because you're worried? All right, so we are now essentially in complete totality, Lester. Oh, my God. And it's odd. You know, there's actually kind of a, a, an interesting little ring around the outside of the campus where you can see other parts of the area where they are not quite in totality yet. But we're standing actually right next to the center line of totality. So behind me, the college actually marked off the line, the center line. There were people lined up here early this morning to take advantage of it. So right now, everybody is standing in totality. And a little concerned and upset that there were so many clouds, but the experience here. Look at that shot of Niagara My other Falls. Son, Luke. Wow. Are you nervous at all right we now? May... No. <laughs> We're losing a little That's bit, but we're looking cool. at that stunning picture that, that, that what is is a nighttime shot for all intents and purposes of uh of Niagara Falls, incredible. Uh, Dave Price of our station, WNBC, is in Rochester, New York. What are you seeing there, David? Well, complete darkness, Lester. I'll tell you, this town of 200,000 swelled by about half a million over the last 48 hours. And we're right now in one of their minor league ballparks. The Red Wings play here during the uh, summer season, and it is packed with thousands of people. And just a little while ago, the decibels were high, the bands were playing, the DJs were spinning. And I'm going to take a moment and not say a word and just listen. 
you can hardly hear a thing. You can see couples with their arms around one another, parents hugging children. I spoke to Lee Morin this morning, a shuttle astronaut from STS-110, and I was speaking to him about the magic of an event like this, and he said, you know, I remember going to an eclipse with my mother, and all these years later, after being in space, after being a shuttle astronaut, I'm still as amazed now as I was then. And he was like a school child talking about it. And to see the elderly here in amazement and the children here who were just agape with wonderment is just a remarkable experience. And I spoke to someone earlier this morning who said, you know, just for today, uh, we're able to shut off the rest of the news and shut off what's happening in and around the world. And later on this afternoon, we're going to be able to just look up at the stars and wonder. And even though there's cloud cover here today, this scene is one of amazement for everyone here. And it's so many sites around Western New York and Central New York and indeed around the country. And for seasoned reporters like oh all of us who have seen a lot in their lifetimes, it's just remarkable to spend a moment and look up at the sky and look towards the sun 93 million miles away and just for a few minutes be amazed at how our universe works. So well put, David, so well put. Uh, it, uh, it's, the contrast is interesting to see how different people, different crowds uh, internalize what they have witnessed here. And as you noted, uh, that silence in Rochester, uh, mostly we've seen boisterous celebrations, anticipation, but you have a feeling as you look around that no one is going to go home so quite feeling the same. Right uh, that the this experience of watching the moon shut out the sun, if only for a few minutes, um, kind of upsets the equilibrium as we've known it. Uh, but yet we see now in these pictures of uh, Niagara Falls, everything is returning as it was, though nature may have reacted in, in different ways in different places to the sudden darkening of the skies. Uh, but what a, uh, what a moment to, to remember, uh, what a moment to celebrate. Let me go to Savannah Sellers right now. She's outside 30 Rock in New York City, which is experiencing a partial eclipse of about 89%, not insignificant. Uh, Savannah, tell us what you're seeing there. Lester, I'm telling you, it really is something to see Midtown Manhattan as dark as it is, not quite as dark as others are experiencing across the country, but at 89% totality, I mean, you could probably see it does certainly feel like something. Also notable that New Yorkers, like these three here that I'm with, we have just seen so many New Yorkers stop, right, and look up at the sky. You've come out from your office buildings right across the yep. street, right? Yep, uh, work at Major League Baseball right across the street, came out to see the eclipse. And what'd you think? Uh, it's pretty amazing. You get to see that very often. It's really cool. Yeah, what'd you think of the crowd stopped here? I mean, you don't see it very often, right? Where you see thousands upon thousands of people stop down their tracks, look up at the stars. So it's a, it's a fun thing. Especially not in the middle of New York City, right? Yeah, well, geez, yeah. <laughs> nowhere else. As you can probably recognize, we're right outside our office, 30 Rock Radio City, right behind me. I also met here this fantastic family. Kath, uh, you are here for your 50th birthday, yes. is that right? Yes, that's right. With my two sons, um, we really cannot believe that we can see this eclipse. This is the only time in my life I've had this chance to see an eclipse. And where are you visiting us from? Um, London, England. And yeah. why New York for this? Well, it's just so exciting, isn't it? The city and look, it's like something out of a superhero movie, isn't it? It's yeah. just amazing. <laughs> it's so dark. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the taxis, you know, the, the architecture. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. What did you think about all the honking? Yeah, We're amazing. That as so we were oh, yes. As if on cue. As if on cue. That was pretty funny. But it really did create quite a scene, Yeah, right? amazing. Yeah, it's like... It's like a movie. Yeah, a movie. absolutely. Yeah. What did you think, Duncan? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. It's, uh, I mean, it's a once in a, once in a 
twice in a lifetime experience. Super <laughs> Absolutely. And Rowan, you? Yeah, I'm, apparently the last one was just before I was born. Oh, yeah. So, you know. So it's like, an omen. It's, it's, yeah, it's an yeah. omen. Right? <laughs> there you go. Are you happy you chose oh, New York City yeah, for this? Really happy, yeah. It's amazing. So memorable. Yeah. Absolutely. Quite an experience, Lester, to be on a corner, again, right outside our office. You know, this is usually where people are just moving quickly, passing by, and in New York City still, even though we love now it, are love it, getting Savannah. past that totality. It's actually now slipped behind a building for us. Yeah, love, love that in Savannah. I particularly love the hon honking horns. It uh, makes me homesick for New York. But I, want, but I do want to talk about oh. part of what this was all about today is inspiring young people about space. And we've got a five and a three-year-old, which, which is which? Five and three. How did they, how'd they react to the uh, clips? He was awestruck, absolutely. They were saying how cool it was getting. Like, it's getting cold over here. Right, the temperature went down right before it, right before it went out, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> what did you see? Can you describe what you saw? Up in the sky? Anyway, it's crunch time. What happened? Did you see the sun? What was in front of the sun? The moon. <laughs> did you did? You saw the moon? Wow. Did it look like a sunset? Awesome. Well, I like your space outfit. You gonna you gonna be an astronaut someday? Yeah, good. Would you, did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. What did you see? I don't know. It was just really cool. Yeah. How about you? Did you? Are you excited about coming here? Yeah. It was, was worth the trip, really huh? Excited. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. We're glad you guys got to see it and share it with all these other folks. Very awesome. It's uh, it's fun to see uh, families and groups. They came here very early. The racetrack essentially opened up seating for as many as 50,000 people. Uh, they entertain with uh, uh, TV screens, with interviews about uh, what was about to take place. Um, they also had race cars coming around at one point before they opened up the track. So really uh, made it a special experience for folks who wanted to come out and watch the solar eclipse. I've received text messages from friends and family all over the country who are watching us and therefore collectively watching it all as we all experience this together. By the way, correction, it was my brother in Nashville that texted me what I thought was almost total eclipse. Ah, okay. Not quite, not my daughter in D.C. Got it. I get them all confused. But nonetheless, <laughs> you know, it really is one of those experiences that everybody can share, whether you're watching it on television or whether you see it in person. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's something that we'll all be talking about, I think, for a very, very long time. Uh, Al Roker has been watching by. He's, uh, he's in Texas, uh, where the uh, totality has, has moved on. But uh, what's it been like for you to watch this, Al? You know, it, uh, and I'm curious to ask Tom about this, because uh, while it was really my first, you know, your first uh, eclipse when we shared that at the, in Charleston, I mean, it was special. But there was something about this, Tom. I don't know what it was that seemed that much more intense, that much emotional. Uh, yeah. Maybe because so many people were so excited about this. I don't know. How about you? I think you're, I think yes, I agree with you. It was also about 25 to 30 degrees cooler, which certainly helps, but um, it was a phenomenal experience to be surrounded by so many experience, people here, 50,000 people here in, in Indianapolis, and they all came for this reason, yeah. right? I mean, they came here not for a sporting event, they came here to be together for this human event and we had them from 33 countries exactly 50,000 people as we said every state in the union we talked to people who came from as far away as hawaii and colorado to come right here to be here for this because they wanted to be right there in the zone of totality and you can see the uh, map on the side okay. of the screen tracking uh the, the path as it moves we want to go to kate snow right now in holton maine which is said to be the last place in the entire country to see totality how far away are you guys uh, kate uh, we're pretty close, Lester. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking off. Really up. What's that? Hello? Okay. Can you hear me okay, Lester, you. or no? Yeah, we, yeah we've okay. got you, Kate. Yeah, Go I was ahead. just about to say, <laughs> sorry, it's a little chaotic here. I was just about to say that I'm looking off with the glasses, and it is a sliver right now. We have just a few minutes before full totality here in Maine. Uh, and folks are just buzzing and clapping. Um, just a minute ago, everybody broke out in applause when, when it seemed to move a little bit, and the, the moon seemed to cover even more of the sun. I'm kind of hanging out here with Mark, our friend who, I don't know if you met, remember from earlier, Mark Horvach is a, an astronomer who happens to live in Holton and knows a lot about what we're looking at. We're really close. We are at about 99%. And you'll notice in the next few minutes, this is the folks that almost got to totality. 
and we're going to have totality in about yeah. a minute and a half. What we're, what we're at right now, you see it's a little dark outside. It's getting colder. Birds are flying overhead. They're a little confused. It feels like you're wearing sunglasses all the time, but you're not. You're looking at my shadow, yeah. Tell us why the, why does that happen, the shat long shadows? Um, the shadows are a little weird because the sun isn't a disc anymore. Yeah. It's this thin slice, yeah. and it's okay, imaging so as an extended right. source. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this... My glasses on just for a second. Here we it go. is it is almost gone. Mark, you can put yours go. on too. It's really something. You were telling me every eclipse that you've seen has been different. Yes, everyone has been different. This one is actually pretty pretty cool in that it's t it's doing all the standard things. The temperature is dropping. Yeah. The light is weird. Yeah. Um, when I was in Aruba, we had a different phenomenon with water over the over the uh, wind over the water. It's going. Let's look up. Let's look up. Here we go, Lester. There's the dying three. Six, five, four, three, two, one. It's gone. Can we take our glasses off? Yes, yeah. take our glasses off. Oh my gosh. Wow. There's Venus, there's Jupiter, there's Mars. Where are you seeing Venus the star? Oh that, yeah, down these below. These are planets. You can well, see the planets in the sky. Plane. These are planets. That is the total solar eclipse. Oh, it is beautiful. It is stunning. And you notice the horizon looks like dawn yeah. because that's the rest of the planet that's still lit up. I've done this once before, and I got emotional then, and I feel myself getting emotional now. It's, it's just something about it that is so incredibly special. I think it's the, maybe the commonality that we're all experiencing one thing at, at the same exact time. time, you know? It's completely dark. This is totality, not what we had a minute ago. Yeah. Oh my God, we had to turn the camera light on so you could see us out here. Everybody else is in pretty much darkness except for some storefront windows. And and it, I, I think you can see it, Lester, right? Do you have a shot from NASA that you're looking at? It's just that yeah, white Yeah, we, we see uh, around it's the in, moon. It's a to 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 totality yeah, and we see behind you that yeah. twilight. You see that little orange Yeah, thing? the twilight back behind us. Say that again, Mark. You see the little orange light there at about 7 p.m. Yes, on the surface? That's yes. a solar prominence. Do you see that, Lester? 7 p.m. if it were a clock, there's a little orange dot. That is a solar prominence, which explain what that is. That's a feature of the, the sun's surface, that's, right? Yeah, there's, there's plasma on the sun's surface that's looping and coming off. Right now, the sun is very active. It's part of its solar sunspot cycle. And so we see that prominence there. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> Everyone around us is saying, oh, man. You notice the light's coming back up. The light is coming up a little bit, but we have about three minutes of totality, well, right? we're through two of it. We're through two already. It goes so fast. I'm looking over at my husband who's here with me. This is something that it's really nice to share with your family as well. Uh, Lester, I know you've seen this all along the path, but it's, it's brought thousands of people to what is a pretty small city here, Holton, Maine. Yep. And this is the last stop in the U.S., Lester, before it heads into New Brunswick, Canada, which is only three miles away from us. And then after that, it'll go over Prince Edward Island and then up to Newfoundland. If you remember Gander, a lot of people know that town because of what happened on 9-11. They, they helped so many people that day. Well, Gander is going to be one of the last stops in the world for this solar eclipse. Do you we have to? I hear people crying. Yeah. I hear people crying. I hear people yelling. Yeah. This is Lester, happens. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Kate, I mean, you talked about feeling the emotion again and, and hearing people crying. I heard the, the crowd leading up to that moment of cheering. And then from what I could tell, they seem to grow silent. Is that, is that what you're mainly hearing now? Yeah, most people aren't talking. I mean, we're trying to use golf voices here, me and Mark, but most people, there's a little bit of a buzz, but people are just looking up in awe all around me. Um, and I think it is that feeling of being in it together that is so special, Mark. I think it's it's spiritual in a way, depending on your beliefs, but it does feel like something so much bigger than us. Something is bigger than us. Yeah. And we're seeing it. We have to put our glasses back on, Let's for one second. Yeah, that's the, that's the key, uh, is, the, is to get those glasses yeah. back on. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see a little bit of sun peeking through now, just, just a tad. 
Tell me more about what you've been looking for today, Mark, because you have this fancy telescope set up. What have you been... A couple things. I want to show on. people what it's like as the moon moves across the sun's surface so they can see what's going on and kind of actually watch this work. Um, people don't really understand. They don't have daily experience with, like, the sun and the moon and everything else. This makes it real. A big cheer going up for the crowd here. There's a local radio station next to us, Lester, and they're, they're telling everybody... What, how was that? And everybody's cheering. So we don't have a lot of experience with the heavens moving or stars and planets. And this is a dynamic system where you can just watch it happen and you feel it. And it does weird things. And now things are starting to return to normal. And it's just... It's just a human experience. I, I almost, I, I don't know how to explain it. I almost feel like, Lester, like I felt it in my chest. And maybe you had that experience where you are too, that I sort of felt this, I don't know, just incredible awe. I guess that's the best best word for it, awe, right? Yeah, awe. I, w I and, walked and into this and told myself just just, uh, just find the moment what, and, and whatever that moment is and with few expectations. And, uh, and I think that's why you get that moment of surprise of... Uh, of how you react yes. to something like this, but it is something simply out of yeah. our norm, let's face it. Yeah, and out of our control too, right? This isn't something that we have any control over and it's been happening for millennia. For millennia, for as long as the human race has existed and before that. Yeah, and by the way, it won't happen in Maine, in New England again until 2079. So this, for a lot of people, I've been talking to some senior people here, Lester, who are saying like, this this is probably the last full eclipse I'll see. Um, so it's, it's got that, that part of it too. Although there is another one in 20 years, if you're willing to go to Montana yeah. and North Dakota. Actually, I'm gonna be heading to Iceland in two years. You are? Yes. Mark will be going to Iceland in two years. So there, there you go. <laughs> I was looking at Spain's on that track too. I would like that. That would be nice. That would be, be warm. Nice. Well, Lester, you guys you save, a, save a place for me on that airplane. <laughs> no, yeah, you just save me a seat on that airplane to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks Fantastic. very much. I want to head now to uh, New York City's American Museum of Natural History. That's where we have our friends from the Today Show who got together today to watch the eclipse there, Savannah and Hoda. How was your eclipse? Oh, we it loved it. <laughs> hey, Lester, we're at the Rose Center for Earth and Space at the American Museum for Natural History, and we think this was one of the best views you could have had in the country. It rocked. There was a weird calm that came over the place. Yes. It got a little dark, a little cold, like you guys have been reporting. But it, it was so. It was such a collective moment, wasn't it? It SG? really was. Yeah. We got Dylan Chanel, we got Craig, Carson, Jenna, the whole gang is here. So, any thoughts, you guys? I. I mean, as the nerd of the group, yes. I mean, when it comes to science, this is, I can't stop looking at it. I mean, it's, it's like, where are these little people on this random planet and the moon is just like putting on a show. It's just, it's so cool. It's and it's not really every cool. day you walk through New York City and everyone is doing the same yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. collectively. Right? Well, not looking at their phones, they're yes. looking up. Yes. And to get to yes. do it with each other. Yeah. Yes. But there's so many kids here with yep. their parents. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Kids it's at schools all over, really all over the country and today. And were you guys actually you know, quiet for a little while? Point of having like that one moment Wait. where everyone's- Al's, Al's in her Oh, yeah. Asked if we were quiet. Hey, we were. We were, we were quiet. <laughs> about two minutes out. By the way, it's like Rokerthon. The guy's but been it, going for twelve hours. <laughs> but but isn't isn't that amazing that you know this shared communal experience, and and we think of so many people as being you know jaded and cynical, and we we're all filled with wonder. It's yeah. a beautiful moment yeah. for humanity that reminds us, you know, that we're, it's one planet, yes. one sun, one earth, one moon. And we're all in it together. It's beautiful. Put. Beautifully put. Yeah. All right, Lester, back to you. The party continues. Yeah. Ah. I am so, so glad we hooked up with you guys. It's, uh, I you miss know, you guys. This connection. We miss keep you. making this connection with others who have seen yeah. it. And, it's, uh, and, and that's what I think is, is so inspiring about it, that we're all, we're, we're continuing to make connections even as we're, uh, now hours into this but we want to take a break i think right now we'll be back with more of our coverage of the total solar eclipse after this welcome back to our coverage of the total solar eclipse i'm here with tom costello and al roker as well as uh, as we watch now the eclipse uh, move out of the united states and up over canada you know, we were talking, Tom, about the moment, the moment when the sun goes away. And I realized only afterward, I didn't take a picture. And then I thought, 
I'm okay with that. It's yeah. really the feeling I'll remember, not so much the sight. I think that's true. I think yeah. you know people in the biz who will get you a picture, though. Yeah, I, th I, think so. if, <laughs> I think I know a few people around here who took some photos. We've got a lot of folks who are sticking around yes, here. Sir, I just want to say, what did you think about the eclipse? Um, my name is Sadiq. I'm from East Africa, <laughs> and I couldn't believe what i just seen. And yeah. I thank you guys for stopping by. Well, I'm so, glad, I'm so glad you're here to share it. I'm thinking there's not, not many days you're allowed to walk on the track. Yeah, but you know uh, what this means? It means when all people come together, the earth, you know how when the moon shine on us. I know what you're saying. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. You all bring us people together and I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I mean, look around you, man. Just everybody, everybody here is connected by what we yes, saw yes, now. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, do you feel that way? Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. You feel that way? Right? <laughs> absolutely, 100%. This is, you know, pictures don't do this justice, you know? This is just spectacular. What about right? that feeling when, when everybody, just the crowd just roared and we looked it's up? It's just an awe. It's, right? There's nothing like it. It's, I've, I've never seen something like this in my entire life. How so. about you, pal? What did you think about it? What did you think um, about it when the sun went away? It was really cool when uh, you could see all the, like, sun flares go up because... Um, the because, sun flares coming out from the yeah the sun flares coming up from the moon because you could see them without even with even out without the goggles yeah. or the glasses because because it was just like a little spot of red you you could look to the side and just see like it was a bit it was pretty and that's and that's part of the whole show what makes it so magical but thank you guys for coming here and talking with us and sharing this moment we I have a colleague believe it or not who got to go on an airplane I got to go on an airplane during the eclipse. His name is Gotti Schwartz. He may have had the best view of the eclipse from thousands of feet above Arkansas. He got the most unique perspective with three minutes of totality over the clouds while chasing the moon's shadow from the sky. Here it is. All right, so right now we are in full on totality. Let me see if I can show you. Look! <laughs> we are, what, about 20,000 feet? Right. 20,000 feet, this is our pilot, Jim. Uh, this is Jim's son right here. This is James. James has given me the best seat in the house. James, I owe you, man. Uh, we've got we've got cities down below, and the cities are starting to turn on their lights. I, the, the sensors must be set uh, for when it gets dark. But it is incredible. It is it is this wild sunset sunrise all the way around and then above us you've got you've got that perfect perfect ring when you're up here and you see you see the movement of this shadow shadow is is very dark on this side very light on this side and then up above you've got that perfect ring you are just you're reminded of how fast the moon and the sun are moving 16 100 miles an hour is how fast the moon's shadow is moving over Earth. It is wild, wild to see. It's kind of like colder outside. It's starting to frost over the window. It's yeah. Down. This right here, it's kind of freezing over. Freezing over. Wow. One of the things that, that's striking up here is just, it's, it's this cosmic coincidence, if you will. This cosmic coincidence that is the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon 400 times bigger and then the moon is 400 times further away from the sun uh, than we are we, it, it's for 400 times further away and so that perfect little coincidence enables us to see this totality and that totality is finally starting to lift oh my gosh this is glorious look at this wow now it's like this sunrise but the but the sunrise is a color I've never seen before. It is like a, a deep purple. This is incredible. And what a happy coincidence, a happy coincidence that reminds us all that these celestial bodies above us are moving at these incredibly fast speeds, these speeds that we can't even compute. And they're happening every single day, just shows us how, how special we are in this universe. And uh, it's crazy to think that everybody down there on Earth, everybody in that shadow, as that shadow moves on, it is, is looking up, sharing this majestic moment. And we're up here looking down on Earth. It is, uh, it's a, a life, it's a, a life-changing experience. Gotti Schwartz joining us now. Gotti, two thoughts. One, how eloquent and inspiring what you said were. The other thought is, I'm so terribly jealous 
<laughs> be done anything like that. Paid to do this. You guys, well, we get paid too. Yeah, but, but he gets paid for that. My name's on the marquee. I, I, <laughs> and, and not only that, not only that. So this, we just landed. Uh, we were trying to do that live for you up there, but there was just the connection went down as soon as the eclipse hit. So we nosedived basically. We came down very quickly to the nearest airport. I think we're in, in Mena, Arkansas right now. We're with Jim and James, and you guys are talking about Lucky. That was James' seat, and he he let me have the best seat on Anytime. planet Earth. Thank you so very much, you guys. Thank you so much for, for piloting this. And remember, we had two jets. Uh, the other jet, it, it's just like this one, except for that one has an 8K camera on its nose. It went even higher. We were at about 20,000 feet. The other jet went up to about 40,000 feet, 45,000 feet, and then it used that 8K camera, that red Raptor X, and pointed it straight at the path of totality from outside the totality. We don't even know what it looks like right now because we were headed to Dallas and we realized we weren't going to get there in time. We had to make this broadcast. So we're going to have that footage a little bit later today. But that path of totality will sweep over Little Rock, Arkansas, and it'll show that 115 mile wide shadow of the moon passing over. And when we were up there, the lights from the city started flickering. Uh, you saw the, the windshield uh, started frosting over because there was that temperature drop. It was just absolutely astonishing. Just listening to it playing back, I wish I could go back in time. It was seriously just a, an incredible hey, God, experience. Hey, Words do not do it justice. Gotti, I have a question for you, though. You know, we were all measuring our time uh, during totality in minutes. You know, we had three and a half or something where I am right now. By being above it, did you experience a, a longer uh, experience than you would have had you been on the ground? Yeah, so we, we experienced about four, four, and a, four and a half minutes. I think it was two, maybe three minutes that I was sitting in that seat. Okay, so here's our flight plan, right? So this is our flight plan right here. And this is the path of totality. These are all the different airports. This is Little Rock right here. So what we did was we came all the way out here and then we hooked straight into the path of totality right around from here to here was a little bit more than four minutes, but then we started banking. Oh, and Lester, you're an aviation geek just like the rest of us uh, here at this airport while we were up there we noticed that there were a lot of other planes going up there was a plane that was doing uh, like a full-on roll it was climbing doing a loop as soon as that eclipse went on so that area from here to here I want to say it was a little bit more we were going about 300 or so knots of course the moon is traveling or the earth the, the moon's shadow is traveling at something like 1600 miles an hour so we were staying with it as long as we possibly could but uh, it, it just, you know, you can't keep up with the moon. No matter how much you shoot the moon, Amazing. you just can't keep up. <laughs> Amazing. And, Tom, you were telling me that the FAA were was taking some special yeah. precautions today because of the you know, sudden change from day to night. They were expecting as many as 50,000 planes to be in the air today. And so, absolutely, they were trying to regulate that airspace as closely as possible, keep everybody self, uh, you know, safe distances, but be very aware that, you, that pilots could be distracted by the eclipse. So the FAA's message today to everybody in the air was be on your game, be very careful, pro focus on the basics of airmanship, but, you know, people people wanted to see this as close as they could. Sure, sure. Tom, thanks very much. We're going to take a break. More after the quick break. Welcome back to our special coverage of the total solar eclipse. The path of totality is now crossing parts of eastern Canada after making a once-in-a-generation journey here in the U.S. I want to bring back Al Roker and Tom Costello, who's still with me. Al. What do you think people take away from a day like this? You know, I think, Lester, you know, without being too uh, uh, religious, perhaps, I, I think you take away the fact that there is a higher power, that, that we get to realize that we're just here and we get to witness things like this that reminds us, reminds us of the just incredible uh, feats of nature that we get to witness. And if people have put it better, and I'm going to leave it to them, but I also am going to say that from Texas to, uh, to Maine, there's no better group of technical people, crews, producers, uh, camera people, 
all these folks, logistical people, than at NBC to be able to put this together and bring it to you. I am so proud to work with this group of people and with you and Tom and all the folks along the line. Uh, it is a great honor. So thank you for having me as part of this. We second and third that. Yeah. Tom? You're here. Well, listen, uh, we've only, we will only have two eclipses, total eclipses in, our, in this country uh, within well, the next ones in 2044, I meant to say. But there are 68 total eclipses worldwide. So if you want to, you could travel the world following total eclipses. And the other point is to pick up on Al's point. You know, as I've done a lot of research over the last few weeks, it's just astonishing. There are trillions of stars out there, trillions of planets. So is there life out there somewhere? The universe is never ending. It, it is bigger and bigger than we ever expected. And so I think that's a big unanswered question. Are we alone or is there something else out there? It is so big and so vast. And on a day like this, I think you feel it. I, I'm reminded at a time like this, how many things that have a buildup and expectation sometimes disappoint. I, I think it's up to the individual to determine whether they felt disappointed by today. But what I saw, the people that I'm surrounded here at this racetrack, uh, people felt they saw something they maybe didn't expect, something deeper. Uh, it, it took a hold of their soul in a way that, that, uh, that they didn't anticipate. And we'll all be talking about it for a while and how we felt on the day the sun was eclipsed by the moon. That's right. That concludes our special coverage. I'm Lester Holt. We'll have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com. And tonight, when I anchor NBC Nightly News right here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'm Lester Holt. Thank you for watching, everyone, and good day. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.